Good morning, everyone. Um, so yeah, Amy and I are going to talk through some work that we've been developing for the last few months as part of the NICER project, um, which is going to deliver a, a climathon in the Cotswolds. It's going to be taking place next week. So I'm just going to say a few things to sort of explain the sort of motivation behind doing that and how it fits into kind of rural innovation in relation to net zero. It'll also fit into a session that we'll be talking about later on when we're talking about participatory methods. This aligns with this idea of what we call deliberative climate governance. So audience participation. So you're probably thinking, what's a climathon? So who in the room has heard of a, a hackathon? Put your, put your hands in the air. Quite a good number, actually. So essentially, this is kind of a climate version of a hackathon, whereby in a conventional hackathon, you, you kind of put coders, I often think you put them in a dark room, but I don't suppose you do, for a very intense period to solve a problem or come up with a, with a hack, if you like. And there are a number of now what are called civic hackathons, and this is a climate orientated version of that. Uh, in a conventional climathon, they're short, intensive periods, bringing together multidisciplinary actors, usually in cities. Um, and the idea is at the end of the day, you, you pitch an idea to a panel of judges and you have a winning team and a winning uh, solution. So we quite like that idea, but we've also been trying to adapt it, both in terms of the context of thinking about how do you make these mechanisms work in rural contexts, but also, you know, can we sort of take out some of the sort of neoliberal properties, if you like. So we were awarded a grant last year by the British Academy, and you can see there uh, the motivation was to see how we apply it to rural areas. We ran two climathons, one in Cumbria, one in Cornwall, trying to target particularly rural livestock farming communities. And we introduced a series of adaptations at that point, both in terms of the, the schedule itself, but also bringing in different methodologies to try and bring in the voices, particularly of farmers, take out the competitive component, and Amy's going to explain that in a little bit more detail in a moment. So you can see there one of the event brights that Pippa created and the report that came from that work, which is available on the CCRI website. So this is what we call the Rural Climathon Playbook. So there is a Climathon Playbook, which has been put together uh, by a company, and we've adapted that for the context of rural areas. And basically it has sort of four different phases that you work through. Phase two is the kind of event itself, the kind of ideas and team development work for climate solutions for local places. But there's a really important warm-up phase where you have to align the event to local initiatives that are already happening. So Amy will explain how we've done that and how we've built the consortium. The event next week will be the kind of idea-thon moment and we'll have people uh, presenting their ideas, pitching their ideas to a panel, but in a much more collaborative spirit uh, with a view to then following that up later on uh, through the work of particularly the Cotswold District Council. So I'm gonna be quiet now and let Amy carry on and explain how we're running the event next week. So we are working with Cotswold District Council through uh, this event. Uh, and so their emergency strategy has kind of really been at the heart of the discussions we've been having. Um, and as you can see there, you know, they also understand that our response needs to be a collective effort. Um, and it's something that we all need to rise to. Uh, and we felt that really the Climathon approach is a really great way of um, kind of responding to this statement as well. As David mentioned, kind of, there's a really important first phase of Climathons in terms of building up a consortium of people and getting an understanding of what work is already going on in Cotswold District and kind of the wider Gloucestershire and Cotswolds area. So we've spent a couple of months speaking with uh, the organisations you can see there on the screen uh, to get an understanding of the work they're doing, how the Climathon may complement uh, the things that they're already doing uh, and kind of working out what potential next steps could arise from doing the climate fund as well. Um, so we've met with people uh, in these organizations and invited them to come along to the event. Uh, and we'll also be hearing from some of them in a webinar uh, next Wednesday morning. Uh, and some people will also be sat on our panel giving feedback to uh, the, the people that come along. 
Another key thing is alignment with local initiatives. Um, so as I said, we really want to make sure that the solutions we're discussing at the Climathon, you know, align with what's already happening and also can actually be put into practice. So again, making sure that we're, we're aware of what's going on and how the solutions that we discuss on the day um, may be taken forward. Um, so these are four kind of examples of the, the documents we've been reading to ensure that the way we've designed the Climathon really works for Cotswold District and the wider region. A key thing that we found to kind of bring farmers into the room is to use creative approaches. So one way of doing that we found is digital storytelling. Um, so again, over the last couple of weeks, I've been out and spoken to a few farmers in Cotswold District to hear about what they're doing on their farms, uh, the actions they're taking to reach net zero. Uh, and they choose a selection of folk cameras and we discuss the photos. Uh, and then we edit that into a short video, which we then show on the day to give people an idea of what is happening in food and farming in the Cotswold, particularly for those people who may not be that familiar uh, with farming and farming practices. Um, we show those so that they can get an idea of what is happening. And the other key thing is visual note taking. So obviously we'll be producing quite a long report uh, about the Cotswold Climathon for NYXA. Um, but another key thing that we want to ensure is that the messages and solutions that are developed during the Climathon reach as many people as possible. And so one way we found in doing that is by uh, employing an artist um, to take some visual notes for us. Um, so you can see there an example from Eden Valley, uh, the brainstorming, this, the bottom is where people were coming together and just coming up with some initial ideas. And then the solutions there at the top uh, are the kind of more developed ideas that people will uh, work on in the afternoon of the main event, which is Thursday at the RA Nunc. So again, Damien mentioned some of the adaptations that uh, came out of the British Academy work. Uh, and one thing that is quite important really is a streamlined structure. So 24 hours is a long time really for anyone to commit, um, particularly for those who are kind of working in the rural based sector um, and especially farmers when they might be out on the farm completing tasks um, throughout the day. Um, so we now have a 90 minute webinar where we set up the, the key issues. We'll hear from four speakers on the work that they're doing. Uh, and then we kind of start to think about what solutions uh, might be appropriate for Cotswold District. And then we really build on that in the, the day long workshop. So everyone meets one another. Uh, we decide on the solutions that we want to take forward. And then uh, we spend a lot of time working to make them feasible and appropriate. And at the end of the day, there will be feedback from the panel um, just to kind of give people an idea of the things that they can take forward and how feasible they might be. Uh, and another thing that we're hoping to include, depending on the weather, um, which, you know, in Zay, we may rethink, uh, is the outdoor element. So again, just kind of getting people uh, up and about, giving them an opportunity to meet the other people that are at the event. Uh, and so we've been talking with um, the RAU to go on their RAU Amble, which is a walk around campus, to take a look at the things that they're doing to support kind of environment and uh, journey to net zero. Another key issue given the focus of the event is sustainable food. And again, we're working closely with the RAU uh, and I know from past collaborations as well that the RAU are doing a lot of work on ensuring that the food they provide is sustainable and it is a commitment that they share on their website. Um, so we are talking at the moment with one of their chefs to ensure that uh, everyone will have a tasty lunch and optional dinner um, should they choose to stay. And importantly as well, as Damien mentioned, we want to move from a competitive kind of Dragon's Den style pitching of solutions to a collaborative process of ideation and solution building. So rather than having people arguing with one another, we're there to facilitate a, a constructive environment. So giving people that opportunity, that space to share their thoughts um, without kind of feeling that they might be argued with. Uh, and essentially as well, um, having that feedback panel as a supportive and constructive um, space uh, in which people can hear from those with some expertise in the area of food, farming and land use, and also to hear back from their peers as well on the feasibility of their solution. <sighs> Following the Climathon itself, there will be a follow-up stage. So if you recall the playbook, there was a, a phase four, and that's the follow-up stage. Um, so, as I mentioned, we're working really closely with Cotswold District uh, and they will be reviewing their climate emergency strategy. So we hope that some of the ideas and the discussion from this event uh, can go into a case study for that review. 
And we've also been made aware through our conversations with the Cotswold National Landscape um, colleagues that they have some work that's coming up. Uh, and they said it would be really nice to use some of those solutions as a starting point for some discussions in those workshops. So we're looking forward to kind of continuing the conversation with them and importantly, supporting that alignment of work. So we know that there's so much going on across Gloucestershire in food, in farming and land use. And so what we really hope from this, this climathon is that people will get together, they'll talk to one another and we can start aligning the work that is going on. For example, through talks with Climate Leadership Gloucestershire. Uh, and importantly, from kind of a research perspective, it's an opportunity for us to contribute to the innovation portal that Janet mentioned and develop a database of rural climathons. So this is something we're keen to continue. Uh, and importantly, just test out that playbook as well. So from the revisions that were made last year, um, you know, is there anything else we need to fine tune uh, uh, or does it work? Is it is it good to go? Um, so that's all from us. Thank you.